Hey guys, this is Michael Duke from Party Down South too. Thanks for listening to Bring Me Your Torch with Jesse and Elaine. Welcome to another episode of Bring Me Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. And I'm still sick. I swear to God, I've been sick for like ever for life. You have some like autoimmune disease. Jeez. No, it's like I've been sick for like a month and a half, but it's weird. Like it, there are many sicknesses within the sickness. So now for this last week, I've had this post nasal drip thing. And then I woke up this morning and now I can't breathe out of my nose. It's constantly stuffed. All so right. I, went... I don't think our listeners want to hear that. <laughs> well, if they're wondering, well, why did Jesse sound so nasally today? I um I went to CVS. I bought some Flonase, some Benadryl, some Sudafed. I'm just basically taking everything. So if you don't hear from me, it's because I've OD'd un- unintentionally on sleep. On, uh, it's like robo tripping. Oh, and, and I have taken two Benadryl and a sleeping pill now. So we got to go home with this podcast or I may just fall asleep in the middle of it. Sounds good. Let's get started then. All right. Well, now we're going to start with a show that we haven't always covered this this last season, I guess. This is the name of our podcast, yeah, and we just we really refuse should. to cover Survivor. Well, I'm already feeling about next season, but so this isn't Survivor. It has finale last Wednesday a week ago, and um, I actually really liked the finale, probably the most out of the entire show. Adam ended up winning, and the group there at the end, I think that's why I wanted to win did you stick with it long enough to, to know who he was I, and what was going on? Well, so, yeah, well, I won, by the way, my fantasy league, blah, which is blah, great. Blah. <laughs> I won by like three points. I think I had Adam on my team, but I fell asleep in the finale. Right. I need to go back and rewatch, you know, the whole thing with him and how he talks about his mom. Oh, it was, it was, I mean, I don't mean this negatively because it was the worst. I uh, watched the after show and I was sitting like crying like a baby because we, we all knew from the season that his mom uh, had cancer. And I didn't realize though she was like a big super fan. They were almost on Blood versus Water together, so she really wow. wanted. That's one of the reasons why she pushed him to go because she was as huge a fan as he was. And apparently, um, she died an hour after he got home. He, he rushed home, and oh you know, and she, you know, she said like nice things to him, and he told her that that he's you're pretty sure that he won. And then she died. Do you think uh, at that point production had told him like, "Hey, we know your mom's dying. We're we're gonna reveal to you that you're the winner." I, who, I I just don't know who the hell knows. Um, I mean, it's a tough decision. I I I turned right around to my mom and was like, in that situation, I never would have gone. But yes, who knows? You know, if the mom, if she's gonna get enjoyment from watching you on there, I guess maybe that's a thing. It's a it's a tough situation. And one of the things he says as he's telling the story, he goes, like, you know, I realize like this is like a great story and stuff, but like it's also my life. So he's like basically acknowledging that you know, the, like you making it home just in time to see your mom like sounds like a movie. But you know this, right. whole, this whole process just like sucks. I was, it was, it was just you know. A How was he handling it? Was he crying? Was he? Yeah, well, he was crying. His his dad and his brother were in the crowd. They were crying. It was like you know, I I cry at a Hallmark commercial. So I'm watching. I go, oh my god. So, but I, so I'm glad he won. Like it just it it was. It really was like a story. And, you know, it had a sad ending, but it was it, it was it was just weird. You gotta, it's you kind of watch a better sweet ending though, isn't it? And I think he said he was going to give. A hundred thousand dollars to the charity towards his mom's cancer. Wow, of his winning. So I'm like, wow, that's like that's literally putting your money where your mouth is. And I guess uh, they were doing a charity thing all night, and uh, all the everything that came in, Survivor was matching. So that's I think two hundred. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really good. What a uh, great like that just gives me goosebumps. Just it, it, it's amazing how people have, I guess, the ability to hold on. Like, you know, like, like you wait for something to happen and then you can, like, let, I don't know if you let yourself go and then you, you, know, you let yourself die. But the fact that people can wait, it's happened. I've seen it happen a lot of times where. Well, that's what happens when, with uh, Ron's grandmother, when we got married, it was, she was really deteriorating in September and October. And she was just waiting for our wedding because she was the maid of honor in it. And literally i think 10 days after the wedding she passed away and she just yeah. got really bad really fast that was what she was living for the sounds is ridiculous but i don't mean to put it with animals too but i remember i had a cat once who was on her way out and she was like you could tell that she was not doing well and suddenly for the last day or two had like this boost of energy and was like you know acting like she used to then then it was gone so it's it's really just weird how you know, we're, we're all animals whether we're human or not but uh that just how things work, I guess. I don't know. This is going to be kind of a really sad part of this podcast. I yeah. Sorry, sorry but... guys. We're just yeah. Well, you know, well, you know, it's, it, it, all, it all kind of hits home a little for me too, and some of the things happening in my life, which you know I won't talk about now, but maybe a little later on. But uh, so it was it was kind of tough for me. But on to some happier parts. 
Um, they announced the next Survivor, which is going to debut in early March, called Survivor Game Changer. And it looks like it's all people coming back again. And you're going to have people, I guess they want, they were trying to get one of all winners, but they just couldn't make it happen. So they have winners, people who made the jury, and then people who didn't make the journey, jury. So some people were coming back. Um, Caleb, your boy, the Beast Mode Cowboy. Beast Mode. He's coming back. Um, Jeff Varner, he was from season two, and then he was on a season or two ago. He's coming back. Your boy, Tony. Remember him from like three or four seasons? I love Tony. He won. I hated hated him. He's coming back. How do you hate Tony? I don't know. Sandra, she's the only person I think to win twice. Coming back. Brad Culpepper is coming back too. We would love to hate him. So what incentive do people have who've won to come back to the show? It's, it's more t- money? Do they love the game? Maybe because you know someone like again, like Sandra. I don't know if I would get her out immediately. Where you know if, like, when Ruff Russell Hans came back, you get rid of him immediately. So it, I guess it's the the adventure of a lifetime type thing. You know, you always hear them say some people, most people get to do this once. I get to do it three times. You know, that kind of that kind of deal. By the way, just a few more names. Ozzy's coming back for the millionth time. Zeke from last season's coming back. Oh, uh, so we're not going to be able to get him on the podcast? Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> sorry. Ty. Um, a bunch of other people, but these are just the ones that kind of stood I out, love so. Ty. I'm glad they're bringing him back. Yeah, I think, I think the, no chickens because you want to eat them. <laughs> no, I, I think it'll be good. Here's the thing. We all like seeing new, fresh faces, but we also all like things we know, and it's warm and cuddly inside when we feel comfortable with these faces and names we know. So it, it, they have to really strike a balance between having these kind of all-star seasons and having the new seasons. But, but when you have two seasons a, a year, you really can do that. Have they, already filmed this? I'm assuming so, just from knowing what's happened in past seasons. Um, they usually have this one in the, in the back. Because if not, Zeke and, and a few other people would be flying right back out now. So I, I don't think so. Yeah, you know, actually, I looked it up. It filmed in July. So yes. Oh, wow. It's, it's like tough. clockwork. It's tough when you do back-to-back ones because you, know, you don't get to put that meat back on you, on your bones. <laughs> so, so, so go home and binge eat. Really? Um, eat, eat your puke. Uh, so speaking of other shows, you know, this is our Wednesday problem. We talked about this last week. That so many of the shows we watch are on Wednesday, so we're always a week behind, so it sucks. But uh, the real world is on tonight, too. And last week, and people on the show were dropping like flies. You know, we had so Mike crazy. leave, you had Theo go. And then last week, in the, in the final minutes of the episode, we find out that Tia is pregnant, which wow. we assume, I mean, we know it's not Theo's because they didn't bang apparently. So uh, it's some guy she slept with before she came on the show. And you got to think that she's going to end up leaving today eventually. So uh, I think it was, um, was it Katrina? Who did we talk to that said that people, were, oh, no, it was Anika. I said that, said that more people leave the season, I think, than almost any other show. Or any other I think season. he gave some really good inside information. Yeah, we'll have to. Wait, but, but speaking of this whole but a Murray franchise, I'm such a jerk. I told you this the other day. I was looking for information on when the hell is the challenge going to actually start? You know, I, I, we've gotten our inside scoop. And you already on know things. the winner, so yeah, I, I, I you might as well a, not even watch. It's freaking like a Vevmo, I think. Is like, oh God. I just clicked on it and I'm like, okay, maybe they'll know. And I go, oh, nope. There, there's, there's who won. They, they know these things somehow. And I'm like, oh. And I actually was happy with who with the winners, but I'm like, no, you just ruined the entire season for me. Oh, boy, you know. Is it I'm, our girl Kayla? I'm not telling you anything. I'm not saying anything because I don't want you to ruin it. I, right. I want right. you to enjoy everything. So. I can, I can take that. I can handle that. So you're, so in the fantasy thing, you're gonna end up picking the person who already won. So you've already won that. <laughs> you well, can't do that. That's. I'm telling you, I see your face right now. You're <laughs> laughing. Um, okay. Well, you know, I won't say any. I, I will talk more offline. I don't want to ruin it for people who may be listening right now. Okay. But um, we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> um, I'm the Vanderpump Rules. The first thing I wrote down was, God, the mean girls are back. If I, I know you're not supposed to say this because it's a uh, you know derogatory or it's a uh, whatever. Is this but, the oh, c word? Oh no no. <laughs> that, <laughs> that would fit too. But all I was thinking in my mind was. Them playing the Elton John song "The Bitches Back," like Jesus, these these women, they're brutal. Like, you, you know, it was always said by teachers in high school they'd much rather get in the middle of two guys fighting than two girls fighting because women are just vicious. Yeah, but guys could really throw blows. 
So my question to you, I think, is how quickly has Stasi forgotten that just a year ago, a year and a half ago, she was completely on the outs with all these people. And now she's coming back in and trying to start problems with Lala and James yeah. when she was just could just have easily been the person on the outs. Last season, she you know, she had turned over a new leaf. She understood that she made mistakes. Yeah. Now she's just eating. We want these like you know these like fried cheese balls or whatever the hell she's getting there constantly. Well, she's back to her old ways now. Yeah, it, it's all started because uh, Lisa sat down with Adriana and basically said, maybe you should play peacemaker between the girls and Lala. You know, just squash this nonsense because it, it's stupid. So Adriana does it. Ariana. And, uh, what did I say? Ariana. I said Adriana. Oh, I <laughs> Ariana. Or is it Ariane? I, I don't know. No, it's Ariana. Oh, God. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the worst reality TV show host in the world because I don't even know the name. Ariana. Um, sits well, down we, there. Can, we can call her Grumpy Cat. <laughs> Grumpy Cat. <laughs> sits down with Katie and uh, Sheena and Lala. And they basically talk it out. Blah, blah, blah. And Kate, or, uh, Sheena says something along the lines of, like, I don't think I said anything that was that was wrong but if i did i'm sorry like you know i, I don't think i said anything that was not true but if i did she whatever, essentially apologize in a you know ass backwards way to lala and katie did not like that oh no so katie freaks out she tells stassi who freaks out and they tell kristen who freaks out and they katie has issues katie has drinking issues she is a Does mean she? drunk we saw this we saw this with Schwartz last season where she basically tells him she hates him and doesn't want to marry him when she's hammered. She gets super drunk tonight and just basically, I forget exactly what she said to Sheena, but said like she's disgusted by her. It's like, Stop with the drunk texting, Katie. I, I mean, I'm on Sheena's side. She, Sheena basically is like, I'm not going to apologize, but I'm not going to be a total, you know, B either. And that drives the other girls crazy. Yeah, I get that, but I don't really see all the drinking that everyone keeps talking about. They, they never show it. That's what, that's what makes me wonder. It's always like, I got a really mean text from Katie last night. She was probably hammered, but they never actually show the drinking. Was she really? Yeah, I I never see her drinking, so I'm like, it's I don't know if I camera. believe that. Well, she, she says mean things regardless. Uh, Maybe I don't she know. just has anger issues and she's not really an alcoholic. I well, feel she, like she doesn't drink more than the rest of the group. Well, she she does have some issues. Like you know, I have problems with her and Schwartz too. Is her them getting this like Schwartz? Schwartz is like like a like an innocent child almost. You know, like he's yeah. Like he, I feel like he, he, he you know, how like children just like la la la. I have like best intentions. That's fun. <laughs> this is good. Like he doesn't necessarily put a lot of thought into what he's doing, but I think he has good intentions all the time. He does things, and Katie doesn't care about his opinion. You know, she just keeps spending thousands upon thousands of dollars more on wedding, and he's like, "What's well, too expensive?" And fifty k. And she looks like him. Like, like my brother paid like forty thousand. Even that. That's I was like, about oh. right in L.A. though. Fifty k is pretty good in but LA. The, but, the, but the difference is when he says... Oh, it's not in LA, though. It's like Sonoma or something, right? But, but when, when he says, like, you know, that's too much money, rather than saying, like, let's talk about it, let's figure it out, she's like, like basically, shut up. This is what it costs. Yeah. And he's just like, okay. And, like, puts his head down and is sad. I, so I don't, how I don't funny it. is it, though, that, <laughs> that Lala was like, they're never going to last. And when they break up, he's going to come and bang me. <laughs> and then did, I've never heard her say that. I just heard Katie saying that she said that. And then just they really, all said that. It's she hilarious. Just made it up. Oh yeah. And she said, my, my boyfriend is the biggest D around. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like humble brag. I think she just made that one up. Maybe. Cause she told him he had a small D like last week. So I don't understand what the hell's going on. Who knows? Katie, oh, God. It was still funny. If Lala did say it. <laughs> yeah. So what's um, up with Stasi's uh, podcast, by the way? I don't know. It, it all just seems so contrived. Like, oh yeah, I'm sitting here like recording in a bar while people are working in the background, and it does seem podcast. weird, doesn't it? I haven't listened to it, so you know that's. I guess I can't criticize, but I don't know. I feel like she does all these like ventures, kind of half-assed, and it's all like more re relying on her being famous than. The actual than point. actually remember, giving a crap about her podcast. Remember from the website, like, style by Stassi. Like, who, who cares? I don't know. <laughs> I was back on Team Stassi last week, last year, and she's kind of really pissed me off this season. I, I'm not a fan anymore. Unless she wants to come on this podcast, and I'm a huge fan, and I love her. <laughs> but, but I even almost take Jax aside. Like, when they show the flashbacks to the first season, and like, the way she treats Jax, like, you know, he's a scumbag, but, man, she's not much better. 
I don't know. I feel like that she was just playing a character. I don't know if she was necessarily that bad, but yeah, I don't know if I'd be her friend in real life. She seems pretty brutal in the way she treats people in general. She's like Georgina from Mean Girls. It's exactly what she is. I feel, she probably watched it growing up. She's of that generation who like that's her classic movie. I I worked with a kid. And I'm like, what's your favorite like classic movie? This kid was like 23. He goes, oh, Mean Girls, definitely. I'm like, that's a classic movie. But they weren't even alive when that movie came out. Yeah, it, was, it only came out like 10 years ago. I mean, they were alive. They're probably like preteens. Yeah, but stop. Well, in that case, Stassi's more of our age. She's I in her know. late twenties, well, and Jax is like. yourself, 50. I'm in my mid thirties. <laughs> no, no, no. I think she might be like. No, they're like thirty at least. Are they? I, I keep thinking of them being like twenty five. No, no, no. They're and then Jax is like fifty. No I'm kidding. <laughs> no, Stasi was born in 1988, so she's young. She's 28. And yeah, I, I mean, that's, I'm 31. That's, that's seven years younger than I am. So for me, it's a big. You know, it's not a huge downgrade, but it's big enough that a downgrade. Not downgrade, but yeah, but it's a big enough difference that she probably had different movies she watched when she grew up. Anyways, who cares? Um, <laughs> basically, it's another week on Vanderpump Rules, and they're all miserable, horrible people. But we're used to that, and we enjoy that. And we love talking about it. And I actually did start watching. Uh, I never watch watch what happens live afterwards, but my thing records uh, five minutes late, and they had Jennifer it's Lawrence on it, so I good. watched it a little bit. How was that? I, know, I, I like Jennifer Lawrence. I think she's funny. I uh. I saw Passengers uh, in advanced screening this week, and you know, it's got a lot of crap online. It's it's we can, we can talk about that offline too. It's it's it was okay. It's fine. You know, whatever. Well, I like uh, Office Christmas Party, so if no one's doing anything, go watch that movie. I think I'm going to see that actually on on Christmas. It's hilarious. Uh, my my brother and I have a standing thing before we go over to my cousin's house. We go to a movie usually every year. Though it's harder now that he's married. You know, he's he has these husband duties he has to do too. But is he going to bring the wife? No, because you know, it's weird that they, they do things together, but they also want to spend time with their own families. And it's, you know, time. It's, is that you know, weird? How's that well, weird? Well, because it's, 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 there are some people who like basically pick one side of the family and they go to their house. Yeah. I think what they do is they do both. Some, well, sometimes they go to one and then the other. Sometimes they just split up. It's, you know, it's, they've only been married for like a year and a half or so. So it's still all new. They'll figure it out. They're, those crazy kids will figure it out. Um, I'm in Timber Creek Lodge. So, oh. so, we're, what was that okay well i was gonna say i love this show but actually this episode wasn't that interesting or entertaining i think well it starts off one of the things i guess it's an ongoing theme throughout this the show is that katie's gone who's in charge i mean technically jamie's kind of in charge but you know he's, he's like ruddy danger field you know, i ain't got no respect um, I like him, and I I totally agree with him. Well, that that was one of the things I wrote down in the rundown was that Mark is a douche because so Jamie's policies they're they're basically all very reasonable rules like you know like don't have sex in the guest beds um, <laughs> you know when when guests need something and I ask you to do it, it please do it that kind of you know, that kind of stuff and yeah. and like Nikita freaks out at him when he, the guest said hey we would love to have breakfast with the entire group you know with the entire staff and he tells it and she's like i don't want to cook for the entire the entire staff and it, i mean if i was jamie i'd say you know what like i'm not asking you to just cook like our normal meals the guest has requested that and she like loses her mind and mark is sitting here rolling his eyes and everything i don't understand it i mean maybe he's annoying it if he in real life if you know we can ask jenna when she comes on the show i think we can get jamie on the podcast too because we yeah. already have jenna that's coming on right yeah, and we have Louise who's gonna come on. Too. Louise is great. Yep, she's yeah, coming I, on. I just got a got a email from their uh, from their PR person. We're gonna figure out a time to get her on. I'm thinking maybe towards the end of the season, so we can roll it into the season finale. Because you know she's been she's been a little quiet. Because the, the problem is with this show, the Mark Jenna thing takes up like I'm such a giant chunk, and then you have Jamie and 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 um, Nikita. You kind of it's hard to come get through to the rest of the cast. I think it's because they seem to be sane i guess you would say <laughs> I mean, t to me louise seems like one of the more sane people around you know the saner people saner more sane saner i can never figure out which one it is. yeah but but you see i think the previous for next week that she kind of calls the key down something and the key gets mad like oh you know my friend it's like dude you're acting like a psychopath the to come down I, I'm, psychopath i think she just doesn't want to do her job and I, and, I, and and we and we like her or do we um, until she comes on the podcast now no, no. i think that she really needs to just cook it's like the whole Ben situation on Below Deck. Just cook the food that people want you to cook. Yeah, and if, if people on the show are listening to us, you have to understand 
we we know that when we're watching your your characters to a certain degree, so we're not like saying you're horrible people, but the portrayal that we're seeing on the TV that's what we're <laughs> that's what that's what we're saying, honest. That's what we're not we're judging. We're not like saying that like, you're horrible people and, and we're you know we hate you that kind of stuff. But but well yeah. maybe <laughs> yeah, maybe we don't know. You may be jerks. We don't know. But yeah, I, I'm kind of over this pretentious whiny chef thing we see with Ben recently. We Are see chefs Kino, all you know? chefs divas? I guess. You know, their job is no more or less, it, it should, at least it shouldn't be, any more or less important than anybody else. You know, you're a team. You all these, I, I know it sucks that you, they're always stuck in the kitchen, but that, that's their chosen profession. What do you, what do you think was going to happen when you became a chef? Oh my god, you know who would be perfect to ask this? Russell Davis, the mixologist from Bar Rescue, because he's around, he's in the industry and he's around chefs so much and he can tell us are they divas or are they not. Yeah, right. And you were you were chatting with him online. You think you gotta get him on the podcast, huh? Yeah, I think so. We'll, we'll, we'll reach out. God, we're gonna have so little so so many guests so little time. I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> it's an embarrassment of riches, you could say. You sound like King Arthur or Louis the Third or whatever the hell these people are. <laughs> An embarrassment of riches, darling. <laughs> so, so Mariah's world. Before we get into this, I want to let you know that I've spoken to a few people about the show. What? And I can they, already where, see where this is going. <laughs> you know, well, they haven't watched the show actually. I just oh. said so. Mariah, we're covering Mariah Carey's show, and they go, "Yeah, she's insane." I go, "That's what I said." And Elaine swears that she's the normal one. I think you're crazy. That's what's crazy about this is she is everyone around her are such divas. Even her personal assistant, Stella, is so dramatic, firing everyone, fighting with everyone. Well, I, I don't I want to know how much of this is real because they seem like they're really putting on a thing for the show. Like, you know, they would never like, – <laughs> I, I, sorry, I'm, I'm getting my they word They would never up. take all these problems to Mariah if this well, was real life. Partially that, but it's also that Mariah is never wrong. You know, she's flawless. She's a diva. She's wonderful. She's a queen. You, you, you never see doing anybody. anything. I know. You know, she's not a perfect human being. We all know that. And why is she always laying down? Does she think that, oh, it's, it's a better angle for me to be <laughs> in this, like, in this unitard while I'm laying on the ground? <laughs> Sit up like a normal human being. I don't know. It's hilarious. But no, again, like she's literally there doing her job on tour, dealing with all these personalities. It feels like she's not causing any of the drama, and it's mainly the people around her. I don't. I feel like they re-recorded some of this Tanaka stuff where he's getting all flirty with her and put it back in after the fact. Because, you think so? Well, if they didn't, then James Packer has a right to get out of there, man. Because you yeah, know, it's, it's, it was. In a, I think it's inappropriate the way that she acts with him and some other people. I don't know. I think it was definitely just him, and he came on really strong. But I also get the sense that there were some text messages between them before he just kind of showed up at her door and was, like, all flirty. There had to have been some context there that we haven't seen. She probably just sent her, like, a selfie, and she's like, oh, man, her boobs are almost out. She must want me, not remembering that this is how she always is. Hey, she might come on the podcast. Calm down. You can get Mariah on the podcast. You know, if you can get Mariah <laughs> Carey on the podcast – you're the boss. I'll do whatever you say for the rest of the <laughs> rest of this podcast. <laughs> I love it. Um, I'll ask her. I'll also ask her to send me this. I'll ask here. Stella <laughs> right before she rips my head off. <laughs> and what's with this hairstyle? So, Mariah Carey's like, oh, my hair is better now than it was on the show. Where, where, where? They need to get this other stylist they used to have. It wanted too much money. Danielle, this chick is like straight out of central casting. Like, it, do they hire like normal human beings on the show? I get the sense it wasn't about money, though. I get the sense that it was definitely about Stella's personality. I don't know. I'm not a fan of the Stella, the Stella person. There's a lot of people that don't like Stella. It's you know she's. We'll have to keep our eye on Stella. 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 And what is with this Mar Mariah Carey? She doesn't have birthdays. She has anniversaries. And and no one likes to get old. Let's be serious. I think, I think it was Stella was telling somebody like, oh, you know. She used to be 12 every year, but this year she's 14 because of the twins. I'm like, what the hell does that even mean? It is a little bit weird. That's the thing. Like, they don't, if I was, was it Christopher, whatever that weirdo's name is, I would have been like, what are you talking about? That's weird. But they're just like, oh, yeah, it's fabulous. You know, it's ridiculous. Well, it's not hurting anyone. So why are you going to sit there and argue with somebody who's paying your salary? I don't know. Traveling you around the world. Traveling me around the world. I don't know. She's... It's it's like Psycho villain carries the bear. <laughs> and then uh, finally, uh, married by mom and dad. 
So uh, so Devin and Ursula got married at the end of the last episode, and we find out that they didn't bang on the first night, and, you know, I respect that. It's cool. I'm when, surprised. When you marry somebody that you've never met before, what is the correct time frame to bang, in your opinion? I don't know. I'd probably do it on the first night. You're a whore, so it's fine. No, no. It's, you know what? If, if you're married to them and if you're attracted, like, why not? I don't know. It depends because some people would say. I get the sense, though, that she was trying to make a point by not having sex with him. But I think if she wanted to do it, which I think she did, she should have just done it. Yeah, you know, there are some people who will say, oh, you know, they can't respect you after the well, first night. Well, yeah, but you're married, so why all respect's out the door. You better respect this person, right? Like, Yeah, or, or at least give me some of that booty. I don't know, but we find out, you know, we knew this already. But we find out that they're talking about it next episode about his un- infidelities in the past. Ooh. And that's, that's not what you want to hear when you're married for the first week. Oh, by the way, you know, I've had some problems uh, not, not being faithful in the past. I'm like, oh. Uh. Do you think this guy, Devin, this guy, I'm like, we don't even know him, although we have talked to him before. We've yeah. tweeted him. Do, do you think he's going to try to parlay this into more reality television? I don't know. And, you know, this is – I shouldn't say this because we did try to get them on the show and we still might. But he he doesn't strike me as, you know, the brains of the operation type thing. <laughs> and, well, just the fact that he has cheated on so he many relationships the in the past. <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Pinky? I think so, brain. But me and Pippi Longstocking, what do the children look like? Uh, He's never coming on the podcast if you're going to compare to Pinky and the Brain. You know, I it's hard for me to respect people who cheat that much. You know, you know, I've never that cheated. much, like yeah. as opposed to one time. Well, I've never cheated, but you know, like shit happens. I guess you could say, you know, like it's, we all make mistakes. So, you know, but but when it happens over and over and over again. And it's, it's like, like a on. thing where you have to like tell your partner like, yeah, yeah I kind of yeah. do it sometimes. Yeah. By the way, I've cheated in every relationship I've ever been in. And then it's like, dude. And maybe, it happens. So get used to it. Yeah, maybe you should get married. Um, yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Hey, Devin, sorry, buddy, if you're listening. <laughs> and and I, I understand why Ursula doesn't want to take his last name quite yet. You know, let's make sure this cheating mofo isn't going to screw you over before you change your name. It's also a big investment because she has a business, a company probably built around her name and her reputation. So you, you don't want to just go and change it. You got to get new checks and new credit cards. Not until season two of Married by Mom and Dad. No, no, no. It'll be after Married by Mom and Dad or <laughs> Married by Mom and Dad, the aftermath. And then we, let's follow our favorite couples and see what's happening to them now. That's know. great. Um, so then there's is it Tani. Is that how you see her name? Tani. How do you like the the mom or the stepmom or one of them asking one of the suitors, like, how, how often would you bang our daughter? That's so and he said uh, that it's inappropriate. Like three or less, three to five, or more than five times a week. Like, is, is there a right answer there? Either I want to bang your daughter all the time. The fact that I want to say I want to bang your daughter in general, it's strange. It's. I just think Tani is so out of line and so out of touch with the reality. And I'm a little bit scared of her smile. Do you, do you ever find it? I mean, this is kind of a, a tangent off topic, but whenever so you, you break the news to your family, not break the news, but you tell your family, like, you know, hey, we're pregnant, we're having a kid. Oh, congratulations, everybody happy, is happy. What you're basically saying to like your wife's or whatever girlfriend's parent is that, hey, by the way, I banged your daughter, and now she's pregnant. <laughs> like, I yeah. that, that would be the first thing that ran through my mind if I had a daughter and I found out she was pregnant. I would, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm happy for her. By the way, it means I now have a mental image of her having sex, and that's not good. Yeah, I mean, but it's life. Get over it. It's, Circle you know, people bang. Yeah. <laughs> people bang. That's, that, that, that's people gonna, bang. That's we should make a new podcast called <laughs> People Bang. That's going to be on my gravestone one day. People bang. <laughs> By Elaine Grace. Get used to it. People yeah. bang. People bang. Um, some people bang and they don't want to bang. Other people want to bang and can't. It's 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 a, it's a crazy crazy world. <laughs> and <by> the, <laughs> people have, bang. Finally, we have uh, Bethany, who this again stinks of production interference so bad. Oh, nobody picked up her wedding dress, so now she's yeah. having a friggin' meltdown. Wah! So why did how did they forget the dress? Like you're getting uh, married, you get your dress, you well, have to have it, something to wear. It's it, like it, waking up in the morning. It wasn't like there was like a normal. Uh, you know, period of time to go and do all these things and all was happening pretty quickly. So either the, it's a fake storyline or she assumed the wedding planner or production was getting it and then nobody got it. So why didn't they just go get it? Was it closed? Yeah, it's like they're not going to start the wedding without you. Just go get it. Make, make it happen. 
But now they're like, we'll bring in other dresses. Ah. Yeah, that's, that's what you want your wedding day. Try on a bunch of dresses and we'll find one that works. Yeah, okay. Eh, yeah. It could happen. John, monkeys could fly out of my butt. <laughs> it's a Wage World reference, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this is a... Uh... This is an interesting time for reality TV because this is the last, well, I guess there's two weeks, I guess, until we really get a whole bunch of uh, new shows. So, The one you're obsessed over, I know you're about to talk about it. Which, which one? see which, it on your face. Which the Schwarzenegger one? one. Well, I swear to you, it's going to be, it's going to either be Asa La Vista, baby, or it's going to be You Will Not Be Back. He said he had five options. But I swear, that those are the two best ones, right? He better do Asa La Vista, baby. Are you kidding? The best one would be if, if they make him leave instead of a limousine from a helicopter and he, and he pulls out a line from Predator and goes, get to the chopper. <laughs> that would be the best one. <laughs> and he's like, run up, they run upstairs and get on the helicopter and fly away. Oh, that's so genius. I don't know. I think, I think it would be good. Um, of course. You're like obsessed. I hope they have another ice cream, though. That's the one thing I loved about the past the well, I, I, I went and bought Penn's ice cream. I think it's still at Walgreens. I, I like it. It's so good. Well, you know, ice cream, it's sugar, and I, I do heart my sugar. <laughs> so uh, so we'll get some podcasts out next week. And then, um, so that first week of the new year, it's gonna be a little tough. you're going to be traveling back to West Virginia. No, to Pittsburgh. Oh, Pittsburgh, sorry. So and you're going to be gone for a little over a week. So, you know, we can try to figure, maybe we can record something to release. I don't know, you know, if you had a chance to watch anything, maybe I can call you on the phone. We can do it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, fig we'll figure something out. We'll... Definitely. You know, we don't want to leave our fans high and dry, especially because the week you're going to be gone is when that, when the uh, the Schwarzenegger uh, Apprentice and The Bachelor both premiere. And, you know, we, we got to cover that. that. Yeah, I can't believe I'm actually looking forward to The Bachelor, but I, but I am. I'm, I'm never going to be Team Nick Vi Nick Vial. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to say his last Vi name. Vial. I'm sure they'll Vial. say it enough. Oh, Nick! Even though you're a three-time loser, I haven't seen <laughs> you forever. You know, come on. A three-time loser? Oh my god, that's so genius! It would be great if towards the end one of these other guys like breaks in and goes, "Hey man, I really love these guys. I, I want to be a bachelor too." Just kind of he, like he did last season. Yeah. He'd just show up. Uh, they should. He deserve it. You know, I, I guess this is worth talking about. You know, I, I didn't mention it before, but I figured. So, what's, what's your take on this whole Black China Rob Kardashian thing? Was it all for publicity? I haven't watched the special yet, was, but I, I didn't watch it nonsense either. But I, I watched. Uh, I was watching TMZ the other night, and they had uh, Rob's. I guess he was FaceTiming or something. Yeah, but he's like, "Oh, she took all the stuff out of the baby's room, but like the the floor is like shampooed and like you know looks like there's never never, never been anything on it." The um, you know, she took my favorite bag of chips. That's what he said. I'm like, what? It, it just seems kind of staged. Like maybe I think he's like delusional maybe and maybe losing. Banged him. once, she got pregnant, and they just they parlayed it into something. I don't know. Yeah, I hate. I, hate I the don't know. I don't, so get, I don't get the sense I'm... that there's any chemistry between them when they have, like, when you watch their show. So I think you're right. I feel like she was just in his life for a very brief time, and then she got pregnant, and they tried to capitalize on that. Well, look, he's a doofus, and she's an opportunist. I think that's that's really what it is. <laughs> I think he has some serious mental issues, though. I think he has depression and some other stuff going well, if on. If you were in that family, wouldn't you be depressed too? God, your sisters are all a bunch of freaking psychos. That made you millions and millions of dollars? No, I'd be happy as hell. You know, money can't buy happiness. That's how the, how the saying goes. Yeah, but it can buy comfort. It can buy you lots of throw prostitutes, I guess. <laughs> if you're if King you're George, King Arthur, or whatever his sock line is. What? What, you, what is that? Oh, it's... I don't know. I, I really stay out of that world. I don't even know why I brought in the Kardashians because I always complain and, and whine whenever you do because I hate them you so do. much. You do. You really do. Over the next year, we'll see how many times you do this. This is number one. No, no, no. It's not the year yet. you got to give me a fresh start in January 1st. My New Year's resolution will be... Don't talk about the Kardashians. <laughs> yes. Unless, unless it's bad things happening to them, I, I do enjoy that. <laughs> this is bad. Well, you know, I told you my number one thing would be a plane of all the Kardashians crashing on top of Justin Bieber. That would That's be, so wrong. Be the happiest Take it back. Life. We're getting the Kardashians on the podcast. Yeah, we can get like, uh, I don't know, I was going to say the black sheep. Yeah, we could probably get Rob. That's who we would get because then the belts would come on here. Oh, well. All right. Anything else you want to talk about before we skedaddle? I don't know. I think we've covered it all. All right, look, we made it through the entire podcast without my sleeping pills kicking in, so that's, that's a win for me. 
Um, let's see if we can get through the uh, the outro here. <laughs> Remember, you can go to our website at www.bringmeyourtorch.com. But where else can you go? Facebook.com slash bringmeyourtorch or Twitter.com slash bringmeyourtorch without the H. No H. You can find us on iHeartRadio, AHA Radio, but of course also on iTunes where you give us five stars, even four stars, and just say how wonderful we are. The more stars we get, the more ratings we get, the more people who will see it and listen to it. You can listen to us on YouTube. We give us a couple pennies here and there. You can listen to us on Blueberry or Stitcher if you have a, an Android. Any app that has podcasts, we're there. Am I right? Yeah, we're everywhere. Just Google us. So just Google Bring Me Your Torch. You're going to find us. You're going to love us. It's going to be great. And after you do that, just remember that you may have come here as a stranger, but you're leaving as a friend. We'll see you next time on Bring Me Your Torch. Bye.